It's good you're here. With earth magic and fire, Aranias and Ander force their way towards my throne, leaving chaos in their wake. I've lost control of my guardians. My power fades. I've always wondered what death would be like. Soon, I will know. My end was inevitable all along. Someone new must become caretaker of the Veiled Wood. Aranias was guided here for this purpose. It's fascinating. In her heart, I think she knows the truth, but she's conflicted. Perhaps it is Onda's influence. I think you should catch up with him. Follow the trail of fire. Aranias must choose to accept the responsibility of her own accord, but Onda will not understand. I expect he will oppose her, and she will need your help to defeat him. Quickly, Aranias wavers. She knows now why she was guided here. Not to destroy the Valen Wood, but to save it. She wants to change course, but she's afraid. She's afraid to stand up to Onda. Aranias' powers grow as she draws closer to the throne. She opened the ground here and they entered the throne tunnels. You must follow. You must be there to help Aranias when she decides to make her stand. My hold over the creatures of the Valen Wood has weakened. That is why they panic and attack. I lack the strength to pull them back. But I can make it so you appear less threatening. Be careful, though. This enchantment will only last a short time. Out of my way, girl. I have no patience for this.
from Silitar, my... my friend. Thank the Eight. You were right about the Veiled Heritance, I'm sure now. They used me as bait to trick the Wilder King, and now Ander's going to kill him. I can't let that happen. I have to stop Ander. I don't know. But somehow it seems like that's what I was meant to do all along. When he burned the forest, I actually felt its pain. I think I'm connected to this place. I can't fight Ander, though. He's too strong. Will you help me? He's gone ahead. I can travel through the routes to catch up, but you will have to fight your way through. This might help. Use this bundle of roots and you can burrow for short distances. It will at least get you past Anders' fires. I will protect the Wilder King as long as I can, but you must hurry. Quickly, the Wilder King is weak. I must get him to the tower. You should come too. Aronais was guided here to take my place, but I believe you were guided here to assure her ascension. If you had not come, I fear Ander would have killed us both, leaving the Valen would wild and vengeful. Many lives would have been lost. Yes, for centuries my sole focus has been shaping and maintaining the Valen Wood, protecting it from outside influence and from itself. Now that she has come, I am free to return to the Earth give back to that which has given so much to me. She is up above. You should go to her. She is frightened of the transformation process, but you must comfort her. This is the natural course of things. 
It is necessary for her and for the Valenwood, but she must choose it of her own accord. I'm scared. Shouldn't I be feeling confident? I mean, we defeated Onda. Look at all of this, though. I've worked my magic on small pieces of land in the Somerset Isles. But this is an entire forest. A living forest. Tell me I can do this. I think he was a man too once, the Wilder King. I mean, he was like us, but when he took this on, he became something else. I think he merged with the Valenwood and forgot his previous self entirely. And he doesn't even remember that. The same will happen to me. If I accept this responsibility and become Wilder Queen, I'll forget my home, my youth, everything. No, but they are my memories, and some of them fond. The ones with you. They seem only partially real, but they're the memories I'll miss most. I have to let go, though. The way I embrace you in my heart, that's how I must embrace the Valenwood. Yes, but I need your help. You must climb the tower further and place the Wilder King's crown in the gardens there. Then you must wait for me. Promise you'll wait. Everything is so... very different. It's like I'm no longer a single physical form, but my being is spread out across the forest. Aranias is slipping away. You are my friend, though, whoever I become. Will you stay for just a moment? I am prepared to lose my memories, but I don't want to lose the lessons I've learned. You helped me understand the difference between a foe and a friend. I'm determined not to forget that, nor to forget you. I know why you originally came here, to ask for the Wilder King's allegiance to the Old Mary Dominion, to know the Valenwood was on your side. Would you still... And I freely give it. On behalf of myself and the Valenwood, you have our allegiance. I only hope Irene realizes that her best ally stands before me now. Before Aranias' memories fade, though, there's something else I must tell you. It's the Veiled Heritons. As you may know, they stole the Staff of Magnus. I know not where they've taken it, but you should search in Woodhall, to the west. I will open a portal to the western gate of Greenheart. Goodbye, my friend.
My cousin was studying with Tellinger at Esdewing. One Dewey. foot after Thank the other. Turn back. That. that way's bad omens. Even the heirs turned against them in Longhaven. The moors have always been a wild place, covered in thick fog. But for us who've known them our whole lives, it's home. Now, though, people have been disappearing into the mist. We find their bodies later, torn up and drained of blood. It's a reckless curiosity drives a person to look for cause in such things. Me? I'll take ignorance and a long, happy life in Marbrook or Woodhearth. But if you got to know, you might talk to Bredwin in his hut in town. He's staying, poor fool. Welcome to Longhaven. Used to be a busier place, before all this trouble with the mist. But we won't let that be an excuse for poor hospitality. It started a few weeks ago now, when the mist changed, turned a sickly colour. All I know is what I saw with my own eyes. Hunters simply dropping their bows and wandering unarmed into the moors as if bewitched. Then their bodies turn up later, or what's left of them. Can't explain it, except a wanderer, much like yourself, a dour Dunmer fellow, passed through here, bought supplies and headed straight into the moors. My warnings be damned. Seemed like he knew something. You want to figure this out? I'd start by finding that Dunmer. No, only the hunters. I manage clan affairs and the upkeep of the village. This was simpler before the forming of the Aldmeri Dominion. Valenwood is changing and its people with it. I find my time occupied in dealing with the necessary adjustments. He was gone as quickly as he came. He was outfitted for battle, though that isn't strange for adventurers. But he walked as one who knows his goal and will not be deterred. Strangely enough, several. They all reported an odd sensation that wasn't present before, as well as an apparent rise in hostile beasts in the area but otherwise returned unscathed. If this is some spell, maybe some are more resistant than others. I've never known such fear. Gone. I must finish my prayers and purify my spirit before I meet my foes in battle. I have been tracking my prey for many nights. A heathen vampire who shall soon be cleansed from this world. I thought him alone, but now that I see this place, I suspect a lair is hidden nearby. He shall regret leading me to this vile nest. 
I have hunted them all my life. And yet I have never seen magic such as this. I do feel their touch upon it. I feel it testing my will with every step I take. But I shall not falter. I shall face these creatures and leave nothing but ash behind. No fear, bravery, or foolish inexperience. I cannot trust one who could become enthralled at any moment. Prove to me you have the will to resist this foul magic. Find me at the lair up the hill east of here. Then I shall consider it. And now my work begins. So, you made it through the mist. Your will is stronger than I expected. Vampire scum. He barely put up a struggle before he fell to his knees, begging for what he calls a life. I did not expect such weakness. I will finish him now, if you'd be so kind as to step aside. No. This pathetic being is hardly even worthy of my blade. The one I followed here is called Fainir, a much more formidable foe than this maggot, I assure you. We shall meet him soon enough. He and all of his coven shall die. As you wish. In this moment or the next, his existence shall end either way. But be wary. A vampire attempts to sway and beguile with its words. Do not listen, no matter what he says. You must have mercy. The Dark Elf won't listen, but you will, won't you? We were different. I didn't want this. Kept to ourselves. Didn't prey on the living. The beasts, the Horvor, glutted themselves on the blood of hunters. We fed on them. We didn't kill anyone. It was a natural way. Until he came. The Veiled One. Ultima, I think. Sought an alliance, promised power, told us we didn't need to hide anymore. Others in my clan agreed. He taught them a ritual using an ancient vampire skull, said it would allow them to make countless thralls. The skull rests in the back of this cavern. Its curse seeps into the mists all around us. Destroy the skull and the magic goes with it. I never wanted this. Spare me and I can bring others to my side. We can be of use to you. Yes, he was the loudest of the supporters along with Athraidel and Lathriel. I saw them speaking with the Veiled One often. They never listened to me. You'll have to go through them if you want to reach the Skull. Now please, just let me go. Finished with your little chat? 
I shall relieve him of his head now, and rid us of his insufferable mewling. Did I not warn you of this? That his vile tongue would worm its way into your thoughts? There's no such thing as a good vampire. Just a vampire that has not yet been tempted. Our goals here are the same. Will you forget them for this scum? I can't oppose you. I don't slay the living. Only the dead run along, little worm. A brief reprieve only. I'll find you and your kin. Oh, thank you. The rest who opposed Fania have already escaped. Filth. Now to Fania, quickly. My blade does not enjoy being denied a meal. Lead on. I shall strike with some Strange shadows. Strange beasts. Pets of... You shall be purified! Slay them all! Since you are thus judged, the same fate awaits them all.
shall be purified! This must be the main living quarters. Fainir must be near. At last, my prey is within reach. Slay them all! Torment is ended. You shall, Feloth, guide my hand.
be purified! So that explains what we saw as we slew them. They bound themselves to the skull. Dark magic often comes with a heavy price. It's you again. The hunters say the mist has lost its sickly tint. Did you find the source? Vampires here. Sickening. Hunted in our own hunting grounds. We'll be more vigilant of their kind now. I'll see to it personally that every last one of them is destroyed. Thank you for helping us. She is lost to me. What the... You! Did I overhear you correctly? Vampires were the source of the creatures and the corrupted mist. Oh, tell me it isn't so. It's just that my wife, Alcenia, was among the lost. And while some have returned, she never came back. I don't know if she's dead or just lost out there alone. I've searched for days, but there's no sign of her. I've just about given up hope. Would you? With the mist returning to normal now, it might be easier to find her. That's what I hope, at least. Oh, a fellow member of the Guild. Well met. I'm here searching for a few others of our order. I don't suppose you've crossed paths with them, huh? I see. So their lust for power led them to their demise. A lesson every maid should take to heart. Thank you for seeking me out about this. You've saved me much fruitless searching. It is good to know the matter is dealt with. time. You there. You're searching for me, aren't you? Let us speak with you. I don't have much time. I know you're looking for me. I'm showing myself to tell you to leave. Tell Thornor you found me dead. It'll be true enough soon. I'm going to end my life before I turn. 
I was out gathering fungi when the mist suddenly took on a strange hue. The next thing I remember is waking up in a dark place, surrounded by strange Bosma with glowing eyes. They told me I'd be one of them soon. It's true. I can feel it. I don't know. I've seen my husband out here, calling for me. I keep myself hidden because I don't want him to see. I can't go home like this. When I turn, just leave me. I'll end it soon. I just want to watch the sea a bit longer. A cure for this? <laughs> you mean like the potions the wild witch brews in children's stories? It said her hovel appears and disappears at her whim, and that she could brew potions to cure any ailment. It's been a long time since I heard that story. And that's all it is. A story. I'm going now. Please don't look for me again. Some of those creatures are still out there, but we'll deal with them now that you've cut off the sauce. That old tale? Sure. We all grew up hearing about her. An immortal witch who extends her life by bathing in blood. I tried it once. I just ended up feeling crusty. Most of our tales are based on some measure of truth. I've heard that some people think she was just an old Bosma who went mad and killed some of her clan, eventually becoming an exile. Who could say for sure? So the story goes. I don't know about that, but Doralyn in the village knows the story better than I do. You might talk to her if you're interested in the finer details. make another trip to Woodhearth soon to replenish my ingredients. If you have your own, you're welcome to use my tools. Well, you've come to the right place. It's one of my favorite tales, though it's quite embellished these days. Better for frightening the children away from certain dangers. There are many versions of her in the tales, but they are all based on an old Bosma who is very real. I've met her myself, though she is a reclusive one. She's called Galareth. And she's a master of the art of hiding. That would be up to her alone. She seems to only reveal herself to those that interest her. But you're welcome to try. She has many hovels tucked away in the wood, but the one nearest Longhaven is just by the sea, to the southwest. She is indeed an alchemist of great skill, having perfected the art over centuries. I can't say whether or not that part of the tale is true, but... If it could be cured by any natural means, I would bet she knows how. Never escape. <sighs> What's this now? How would I know what others call me? I am Galareth, and you are inside my home. Why have you come here? I might have something that will do the trick, assuming they haven't fully turned. But I expect you to do something for me in return first. So she can't face her husband after what she's become? I know what that feels like. Very well. 
Take this to her as soon as possible. She must drink it before her transformation is complete or it will be too late. You're searching for me, aren't you? Let us speak quickly. I don't have much time. You again? Please, I have nothing more to say about it. I'm already suffering enough without you making a mockery of me. I just started thinking about my childhood now that my life is over. That's all. I like those stories. Even if that's all they were. Children's tales. Ugh. Tastes like bugs. I do. I do feel somewhat warmer. More myself. Less cloudy. But what if they come for me again? I feel like they're in my mind, always watching. I see. I noticed the mist had changed. I thought it was only my changed eyes embracing its corruption. Thank you for this. I thought it was hopeless, but now I can return home to Thornor. I will. I can't wait to see him again. Please. Take this. It isn't much, for I can never repay what you've done for me, but I hope it will suffice. I can't believe it. He was right again. When will I learn not to wager my gold against Razumdar's instincts? He said you would be coming this way. Is it true, then? Did you persuade the Wilder King to swear loyalty to Queen Irene? The Wilder Queen, eh? Times are changing in Balenwood, aren't they? All this has put the Dominion in a delicate position. I suppose that's why it's so important that we are here. Razumdar sent me here to await your arrival. He wants you to join him as quickly as possible. It seems Vicereve Peladil came this way after stealing the Staff of Magnus. Who can be certain? I suspect he merely seeks to find a ship and flee back to the Somerset Isles. Perhaps he is determined to see Prince Naaman's body laid to rest there. Razumdar has his own suspicions, though, and he seemed quite concerned. He was unwilling to share his suspicions with me. Whatever his instincts may be, though, this time I will wager that he's on the mark. Undoubtedly, Razumdar intends to share his thoughts with you. You'll find him in the Thalmor headquarters.
houses. Can you imagine? Will you hold still? This illusion requires bah. precision. Bah! The Stalmor mage will drive Razumdar mad. Stand here. Hold this. Everything's so exact. This one prefers more flexibility. He is glad another eye is here who understands. Because we must move quickly here if we are to protect the Dominion. We must find Peladil, of course. This one tracked his stinking hide here after he stole the Staff of Magnus. He's the boss of the Veiled Heritance now, and he has allies here in Woodharth. Dirty traitors who conspire against Queen Irene. This we do not know yet, but Razumdar has devised the perfect way to flush these rats from their hidey holes. If they had an opportunity to assassinate the Queen, surely they would take advantage of it, yes? No, Razumdar will be the Queen instead. If this mage does his job, of course. We will go soon, so Raz must prepare. Speak to Trithain Fariel. She can tell you more about the traitors who are helping Peladil. This one would ask a favor. If the Stalmor mage turns Razumdar into a monkey, you must exact vengeance. Oh, and you would need to track down Peladil on your own. Raz hopes this will not be the case, though. Hmm. Razumdar thought the Viceree was a clawless coward. Always going on with Prince name on this and Prince name on that. So pathetic. But he is more tricky now. All this one knows is that Peladil is near and that he has the Staff of Magnus. Last time this one saw Naaman, he was still quite dead. But Peladil wouldn't drag around the Prince's corpse just to make sure he gets a proper burial. Some sort of necromancy must be planned, but why? Naaman can't rule the Dominion if he is undead. You share Razumdar's distaste, yes? We must accept them, though. The Thalmor were sent to Woodhearth when the Dominion was formed. This port is critical for trade, and there is concern it could be a target for enemy spies or for the Maumer. Battle Reeve or Selmo issued the orders. But Queen Irene gave her blessing. She prefers not to send the Thalmor to every city in the Dominion. But in this case, she had little choice. Even Trith and Fariel agrees they are needed. Of course, wherever there is sea, there is the threat of the Sea Elves. They've sought to conquer these shores for centuries, and the rise of the Dominion has only served to provoke them. The Thalmor help boost the city's defenses. A perfect illusion, he says, to make Razumdar look like Queen Irene. This one prefers a regular disguise, but Trithane Fariel doubts that would suffice. You should speak to her so we can get on with this. So you're the one who's going to accompany the cat on this guar-brain scheme of his? I hope you realize what you're up against. These traitors in our city have sought to stir up rebellion since the day King Camoran joined the Dominion. So you'd think, but we've never caught any of the traitors. They may not actually be Bosma at all. Our enemies are always one step ahead of us. Roman doesn't want to believe it, but I think it's obvious there's a spy among the Thalmor. No, we've gone to great pains to keep Razumdar's plans secret. The spy must believe that Iren is really here. There have been rumors that the Maoma plan to raid us, so we've put word out that the Queen has come to make sure the city's safe. Yes. Mad as the cat may be, his plan might actually work. The story is that the Queen wants to personally investigate the old Imperial underground. You'll escort her there to meet Asteril, a Thalmor officer we suspect may be a spy. Ha! The cat didn't tell you, did he? No, we can't send any guards. We don't know who we can trust. He thinks the two of you can handle it, though. 
I don't know if I'd call that confidence or foolhardiness, but I hope Bandar is with you either way. As soon as Sanadul gets the spell right and turns your friend into a queen. Assuming this works, you and Razumdar should leave for the Imperial Underground straight away. Oh, here we go now. It's about time. Hmm. Very convincing. But is the illusion applied everywhere? Perhaps this one should take a moment in private to double check. Yes? There were no miscalculations, I assure Raz you. Raz looks good in this form. But then, Raz always looks good. Queen Irene could maybe learn a thing or two from this one. A fair point. Raz, uh, I will keep that in mind. You have spoken with the Tree Thane, then? You understand my genius plan, yes? Yes. There we will find out the truth about this Thalmor officer, Astaril. She's quite the beauty, I'm told. But traitors are never what they seem, yes? This one is... No. I'm ready when you are. Be ready. This one is counting on you to watch his, uh, her back. Astril, is that you? Yes. Come closer, my queen. I have something for you. What is this? A gift in memory of Prince Naaman. Vice Reeve Peladil sends his regards. You will die and the true King of Alinor will rise again. Oh. Well, that hurt. Raz will be fine. A few burns will not kill this one. But uh, for the moment, he thinks you should press on alone. You must catch Astaril and find out where Peladil is hiding. She... Used some kind of magic to escape, but it was not a portal, so she cannot have gone far. She must still be here, somewhere in these tunnels. Raz heard sounds of fighting. Did you catch up with Astaril? Were you able to question her about Peladil? Dark moons. If Astaril got away, we will have to track her down. And the Veiled Heritance is here? That is troubling. 
Razumdar suspected a few might have come, but he did not expect them to be here in any numbers. Hmm. Some of Razumdar's contacts warned him that the Veiled Heritance was not putting all its hopes on Prince Neyman, that they had backup plan. Neyman is dead. This must be backup plan. Possibly. If they cannot rule the Dominion, perhaps they would destroy it by attacking Valenwood. But Raz would not have thought the Heritance could muster enough manpower. Let us go. We must tell Trithane Fariel what we have learned. If what Razandar says is true, the city of Woodhearth owes you a debt. Of course, if the city's attacked and destroyed, that won't be worth much. Maybe we can prevent that. The cat said you found orders from Vicereve Peladil. Can I see them? Damn! This proves that Peladil is planning something here. Something even bigger than killing the Queen. I'm glad you brought it to light. I just hope it's not too late for us to do something about it. There's something about Peladil's orders. The reference to Astoral seems strange, and a Roman still refuses to believe she betrayed us. Either way, Astoral's the key to unraveling this mess. We need to question her and find out what she knows. Well, if she hasn't realized we're onto her, we might be able to catch her by surprise. She might be down at the Thalmor residence right now. I assume a Roman will want to be there when you confront her. The three of you should go quickly, though. Even if Astoral's fled the city, you might be able to find some clues about Peladil's plans in her quarters. Let's hope you find something, because otherwise we don't have much to go on. Not much, really. I heard he just followed Prince Naaman around like a little lost puppy. Now he runs off with Naaman's body, steals the staff of Magnus, and takes charge of the Veld Heritance? It seems this puppy might have a bite after all. This is preposterous. Astral has risked her life for the Dominion more times than I can count. She is one of my best officers. I refuse to believe this irresponsible slander until I have spoken with her myself. You must understand, one doesn't become a Thalmor agent until their loyalty is proven beyond question. If Astral confesses, or if we find substantial proof, I will admit I was wrong. Until then, I remain extremely skeptical. This is Thalmor business, and I am going to the Thalmor residence to confront Astral myself. You are welcome to accompany me if you choose. You see? It's clear that Astral has been dead for some time, so she cannot have been the one you saw in the Imperial Tunnels. <laughs> I told you, say what you will about the Thalmor, but we do not have traitors in our midst. 
Her death troubles me greatly, but the integrity of the Thalmor is of greater concern, and I am pleased to be proven right in that respect. With that concern behind us, we can finally start searching for the true source of this treachery. Undoubtedly, it was the same person that assumed her likeness and attempted to assassinate the queen, uh, uh, Razumdar. Speaking of the cat, it seems he may have found something. This one looks forward to pouncing upon an unsuspecting Peladil. This nonsense is becoming tiresome. There could be some useful evidence down here. Let us look closely before we move on. Asteril had a sister? A twin, perhaps? That would explain much. Raz suspects these tunnels will reveal the rest. My favorite people, the very faces of my failure. And now you've tracked me down just to watch me die? You're just like my sister and the rest of the Thalmor. No sympathy whatsoever. <laughs> Funny you should ask. I was wondering the same thing. Then I realized he lured me here so his assassins could kill me. This is my reward for my loyal service. A blade in my gut and a nice cold tomb. Planning? Oh, he's well past that point. As we speak, his armies are storming the shore, up at Seaside Sanctuary. 
Once they've got a foothold there, they'll conquer all of Valenwood. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Of course not. They're just one prong of the mighty trident with which Peladil will smite the Dominion. He signed a treaty with the Malma. And with the Staff of Magnus, he's going to raise an army of undead. Yes. Your days are numbered all right. <sighs> it's simple enough. The Sea Elves have always coveted these shores. If they help Peladil dismantle the Dominion, he's agreed to give them Valenwood. It's not like these damn Bosma have done anything other than cause us trouble. You mean elsewhere? Far as I know, Paladil doesn't even care. He just wants the Somerset Isles. I don't even think he wants to rule them himself. As long as they're ruled by someone other than Naaman's sister. Of course, who better to lead an undead army than an undead prince? And if Paladil brings him back, Naaman will be bound by the Vicereve's will. No longer will Paladil need to worry about the Prince making bad decisions. Huh. <sighs> Paladil says he's under no illusions about that fact. But he still gets rather glossy-eyed when speaking about Naaman. I suspect he still harbors some hope that the Prince will play a role in the future he has envisioned. <sighs> Irene is a false queen. And the Aldmeri Dominion is a pathetic joke. Nothing can change that fact, even Peladil turning on me. I'd gladly sacrifice my life to bring about the Dominion's downfall. It means my life was worth something. Having her as a twin was torture. While she climbed the ranks of the Thalmor, I was perceived as a failure. When Peladil recruited me, it was my turn to shine. I have no regrets. Just leave me to die. I wouldn't accept your help, and you'd be better off not offering. It's too late. He can't be stopped. Razumdar explained how we were fooled by Laryril. I wish I had time to show proper gratitude, but he also told me that an army of Maorma, led by Vicereve Peladil, is making landing on our shores. Is this true? Damn. Honestly, I rather hoped he misheard. I suppose that's rarely the case. Very well, then. I will muster the city's defenses, but there is only so much we can do. I'm certainly glad you're here. You and Razumdar may be our best hope. You should get to Seaside Sanctuary as soon as possible. If we strike the Maoma hard enough there, we might be able to drive them back out to sea before they get a foothold on the shore. I'll send anyone I can spare, but the city comes first. There is an outpost at the Sanctuary with a few soldiers, if it hasn't been overrun. Go through the Serpent's Grotto and look for Major Serenway. She's the commanding officer.
Those frozen faces. She killed them all. Froze them solid. How am I supposed to defeat that? I had to run, right? I had to hide or I'd be killed too. Louis' mother, a legendary beast. We'll kill it and take home the trophy and be legends ourselves, we said. We charged and she... Well, just look down there. Their screaming faces, frozen in death. <laughs> it's stupid. I snagged my foot in a root and tripped. While the others were slaughtered, I was face down in the mud. I know I should avenge them, but I'm a coward. Please, help me. Destroy that thing. There you are. I felt embarrassed at my cowardice sending you back after this thing after I'd fled. I thought I'd come to help you avenge my companions. You did it? You must be stronger than you look. Thank you for avenging my hunting party and making the area safer for all. I don't have much, but take this as my thanks to you.
Unless you're here to help us, I'd ask that you be on... I swear, Zoxus himself has it in for me. Or this is his idea of a joke. I've been complaining about how serving in the Guard is a waste of my abilities, and now we're in a crisis that demands my skills, and I'm woefully out of my depth. The damn seals are attacking both the Sanctuary and the Grotto. They must have known about this place. A massive sea serpent has been bound here for centuries in the pool above us, and now a Marima mage has broken the seals holding it. I don't know. All I've been able to decipher is the seals were created with blood magic. If you kill the Maoma and infuse this blood rune with life energy, you might be able to repair the seals. But there's more to it. I... I need to keep reading. If this works, I'll owe the gods an apology. Fill the blood rune and then use it on the three seals. After that, we'll have to deal with the binding pool. Hopefully, I'll have figured this out by then. I'll meet you up at the gate to the pool. Ask then, but be quick. If that serpent gets free, it'll destroy everything on the western shore of Valenwood, including Woodhearth. The seals are actually small pools of water. Elaine, Ralos, and Valir. They're named after those who sacrificed their lives to bind the serpent. That's all I know. Don't know how the mage broke them, or if the blood rune can really repair them. From what I've read, it sounds like that might not be possible. This is no ordinary sea serpent. The text refers to it as the Great Serpent. I don't know what that means, but apparently binding it here was the only way to stop it. I only know that he's very powerful. When our scouts approached him, he burnt them to cinders with the flick of his wrist. I suspect he also knew about this place beforehand, and he probably studied up on the seals and on the serpent. Again, I'm only guessing here, but I read that the Maoma were once able to command such creatures. It scares the oblivion out of me to even consider it, but what if their mages have rediscovered such magic? You mean, did I just happen to be carrying one around? No. I found it with this text, and I'm proud to say I actually knew what it was. I've read a good bit about blood runes. Kind of a morbid fascination, I suppose.
you see that? The Marima Mage had activated the barrier on this door to block us from getting to the binding pool. But I figured out how to break it. What about you, though? Did you repair the seals? We have to go out to the binding pool and channel the energy to rebind the serpent. I've read everything I can, but this is old, wild magic. I don't know if I can do this. And if the Marima Mage is out there, well, I certainly can't defeat him. All oh, right. If this works and you are able to defeat the Marima Mage, I'll need you to do one more thing. When I say the word, use the blood rune to activate the final seal. That's it. All right. Ifra's bones! What in oblivion is he doing? We have to stop him! Hurry! I'll begin the rebinding spell. You take care of that mage! Use the blood rune on the final seal. Quickly! Saying sweet mercy. We did it. The serpent's bound again. First off, I have to say I'm sorry to the gods for ever doubting them. Second, I promise I will never say that guard duty is beneath my abilities again. Never. I think I've done all I can. You're pretty tough. Tougher than me, at least. You may be ready for the next fight, but I'm going to need a few minutes. Go on, though. With you on our side, this whole Mauma thing will be over quick, I imagine.
We should have expected as much from him. Careful. Sure, you look like you can handle yourself, but this place is full of unscrupulous rats. Especially Angor. Bastard thinks he can get away with ripping me off. Say, you interested in helping me settle accounts? For pay, of course. See this Seahawk over there? That's Angor's ship. From the looks of it, I'm not the only one he's pissed off. Dominion guards have been poking around there, too. He must be in with some real scum. Angor was supposed to sell me a shipment of Somerset silk, but he pulled a switch. Left me with nothing but a crate full of rags and a dumb look on my face. Bring me the silk out of the Seahawk's hold. You'll be paid when I see the goods. Any luck? Excellent. I wish I could see the look on Angor's face when I take these to market. I bought them fair, after all. Thank you for your help. Here's what I owe you. Unlike Angor, I keep to a deal.
<gasps> John and Jode! This one hears there were vampires the discovered in Long Haven. Bad business that I. They I say people are disappearing on the moors. Another hero drove them out and dispelled the evil mist from the moors. What exactly do you think is going to happen to you, hmm? You strike an imposing figure, friend. And you look like you might not be shy about using it to make a little coin, yes? I've got a little problem, and I think the answer just stepped onto this balcony. The boss offers certain uh, services here in Woodhar. As expected, such services are not free. One called Mantir owes the boss a cut of his profits, but is holding out now that his payment is due. This one means to collect, one way or the other. Only certain kinds of people profit from war. Mantir has benefited particularly, even as we are spread thin. In such times, we often employ outsiders, collect the payment from Mantir, and the cut of it is yours. Simple, yes? Well... Quite busy at the moment, sorry. I'll be lucky if this hall allows me to keep myself fed, much less pay off my debts. Please, leave me to my work. Ah, oh, not this again. Look, run along and tell those flea-bitten cats that I'll have their coin as soon as possible. It isn't my fault that damn clever farwin nicked it right out from under my nose. Yes, yes, no need to rub it in. I don't know how she managed it, but she must be quite skilled. Too bad she doesn't understand what a mess she's landed me in now with a fat cat and his pets. Uh, I mean, the majestic Bashira and his cohort. You can try. I don't think it'll do any good. Right, a theft and all that. <laughs> the act was artfully done. Right in front of my eyes, and yet I had no idea. By right, she owns my property until she makes a demand to me in return, and I agree to a price for the return of what was stolen. Ah, oh, good. I look forward to our next meeting. You're a bit forward coming into my home in such a manner. Something you need? Manthea's in trouble with the fat cat? I didn't know that. Well, he can have it back all right, but by right of theft I demand something in return. I can't believe he hasn't come to ask me himself yet. Easy. I just want him to marry me. Divines know. He's avoided me long enough. Of course. I hoped he'd come to me, but then he always was a hard-headed one. Let's go. Ah, oh, how exciting. I wonder if I should have washed my hair first. No. Nah. Hello again, Manthea. Fine day this, don't you think? Yes, yes, let's get on with it. Make your demand, Farwin. Surely you know by now, I want us to be married. 
I will return the coin I stole in exchange. I thought as much. So I must marry you or be gutted by the fat cat's thugs. Ugh, very well. I, Manthir, acknowledge that you, Farwin, rightfully stole my coin, and in exchange for its return, I agree to marry you. <gasps> I'm so happy you feel the same way. Well, I hope you're happy. What's the phrase? Out of the kettle and into oblivion? Shackled for life to Farwin. I wouldn't overstate things. But here is the gold I owe. Take it back to those mangy cats and tell them I have no more need of their services. My ledger's clear, yeah? Praise the Eight, and praise be to you for your bravery at Tarinan. the gold, yes? We'll see about that. But you have done as was asked, and will have your gold as we agreed. The noble Bashira appreciates your service and your discretion. <laughs> 